In Acts 1711 we read, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So without further ado, let's look into God's Word, the Bible. Good morning. This is devotional number 405, and today's date is February 9th, 2018. This week we've been considering Deuteronomy 11:19, And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Today we want to consider the phrase, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And again, uh, in the context of teaching our children, which needs to be done uh, on, a routinely, uh, on a routine basis every day as we uh, deal with our children, and we've also learned uh, previously that uh, this admonition uh, has a deeper spiritual meaning, which we want to look at right now. The Hebrew word shakab is Strong's number 7901, and it's translated as lias down in Deuteronomy 1119. It's also used over 200 times in the Old Testament, and in the majority of cases, it's rendered as lie, sleep, and lie down. Spiritually, however, it can refer to physical death, uh, as the following verses indicate. In 1 Kings 2.10, we learn, So David slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David. Likewise, 2 Kings 4.32 declares, and when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. Job 14.12 adds, So man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. And Job 20.11 portrays death as the wages of sin. His bones are full of the sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. Similarly, in John 10, 14 through 18, the Greek word Strong's number 5087 describes the Savior's willingness to lay down his life in demonstration of the atonement which took place prior to the foundation of the world for God's elect people, His eternal church. Notice how God repeats these two words laid down four times in this passage. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. John 15, 13 is a further reminder of the infinite expression of Christ's love in offering himself as the sacrificial lamb of God. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. The elect were not friends, but rather enemies when the atonement was accomplished at the foundation of the world, as Romans 5.10 underscores. If, excuse me, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God 
by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. The phrase, when thou risest up, uh, found in Deuteronomy 11:19, is actually one Hebrew word. Uh, it's 6965. It's used over 600 times, and most commonly, it is rendered as up, arise, and raise, and to a lesser degree, as abide, rise, set, stand, and confirm, among others. They are also utilized in a variety of ways, as you'll presently note. These next passages highlight God's judgment uh, during our present time, the day of judgment, on all who do not have a Savior. In both uh, verses, uh, 6965 is translated as rise up and abide. Zephaniah 3.8 makes this proclamation, Therefore wait ye upon me, saith Jehovah, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. <coughs> Excuse me. And Nahum 1.6 also warns, Who can stand before his indignation, and who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. We also find other verses that affirm God's salvation program, which is by grace alone, and by the work of of the Lord Jesus Christ <clears throat> during the day of salvation. 1 Samuel 2.8 <clears throat> beautifully maintains, He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill, to set them among princes, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are Jehovah's, and he hath set the world upon them. Hosea 6.2 also declares, After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. And Psalm 40 verse 2 testifies, He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. <clears throat> Excuse me. These next passages refer <clears throat> to the Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, and the task he has given his people to perform in our current day of judgment. Ezekiel 34 23 asserts, And I will set up one shepherd over them and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. 1 Samuel 2.35 uh, also asserts, And I will raise me up, <clears throat> excuse me, a faithful priest, this is referring to Christ, that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk, <coughs> excuse me, and he shall walk before mine anointed forever. Deuteronomy 18.18 18 announces, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee. This is speaking about Moses, or speaking to Moses. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. I'll conclude with the penetrating words of John eleven twenty five. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, 
yet shall he live. As we contemplate the verses uh, in this series, may God give us his grace and strength to not only teach our own children and grandchildren, if, it, if that's the case, but to anyone else God might give us an opportunity to witness to in obedience to his command in John 21, feed my sheep.